Hi, and welcome to this second video in the Microbit series, where we're going to be looking at making a simple counter from a Microbit that we could use to keep score in a game. And to do that, we're going to use variables. A very quick introduction to variables. They are just temporary stores of data. Um, so in your program, if you've got some data, like a score, that you need to keep track of, you can use a variable to store that data. Each variable has a unique name, and that's how we can keep track of the bit of data that we're saving. So, we're going to be using the PXT editor at microbit.org, and to get us started, we're going to need to add a variable to our program from the variables drawer, which is just down here. So, if we click on variables, and then we have an option here to make a new variable, or make a variable. So, click on that and then you are asked to give a name to your variable. So this variable is going to be used to keep a score, so it makes sense to call it score. Let's press OK, and now we've got a new variable made called score. So what we want to do is when our program begins, we want to set score to zero. So right at the start, it has a zero value. Then we need to show this to the user. There's no point keeping this but, but hiding it inside our microbit. We want to show it on the display. So let's go to basic and let's show a number. Now you might think that's, that's great, I'm going to start my program, it's going, to, it's going to show a zero and that's fantastic. But actually it's just coincidence that the score starts with a value of zero and we're showing number zero. Actually we want to show the number that is saved in the score variable. So to do that we go back to variables and we choose this block here which is our score block. That's going to show, oops if I put it in here, it's going to set score to zero and then it's going to show whatever number is stored in score on the screen. Now it's still showing a zero there but if we deliberately changed a value, let's say we made this a two, and we rerun our program, you'll see immediately it updates to show us a 2 because now it's showing the number stored by score which is a 2. But let's put it back to 0 because we want it to be 0 when we start our program. So in order to use our little counter I'd like it that if we press the A button we can increase the score and the B button we can decrease the score. So to do that we're going to need the input draw and we can say on button A pressed drag that one in. Let's think what do we want to happen when the A button's pressed? Well we want score to be increased by 1. So fortunately under variables we've got a really useful one to do that. We can change a variable by 1. By the way don't worry that it says item. Item is a variable that we get given for free every time we start a new microbit project. Um, so, but we can change that. So if we go change item and we use the drop down we can pick our score variable. So we're going to change the score by 1. Uh, great, OK, but it's not updating our display and that's because we need to put another show number score in there. Um, so if you right click on that you can actually just duplicate it. it, saves us some time. And we can drag it in, still inside our when A button is pressed, but we can drop it in just underneath the change of score. So if I now try it, you'll notice our score goes up. Nothing's happening when we press our B button though. So we need to do the same sort of code but for our B button. So again I can actually right click anywhere I like on this pink bit and do duplicate and that's going to give us a whole double copy of that block of code. But we can just quickly make some adjustments. So now we're going to say well on button B uh, change score by now we don't want the score to increase, we want it to decrease, so let's make it change by minus 1. So that's going to take 1 off the score's value every time B is pressed. And then we update the display again. Let's try it now. It's increasing with A, and it's decreasing with B. And in fact, if I keep going, it'll actually go into the minus numbers. So I think there's one more thing we could add to improve this, and that's maybe a reset score button. So to do that, we're going to make it that when you press A and B together, 
it resets it back to zero. So let's just grab on button and let's change to A and B. And we'll say that when A and B is pressed, we're going to set score back to zero. And in our simulator, we get given an A and B button to press to, so that we can practice this. So let's try one, two, three, two, press that one together and it should go back to zero. Ah, I tell you, it will have gone back to zero, but I didn't update the display. You see, it's very helpful to make these mistakes in these videos because you get to see that actually the best way to learn is by making mistakes and fixing them. Let's try it again. Great. So there we go, we've made a simple counter that you could use to keep track of a score during a game. All you need to do is just press the A button to increase the score, the B button to decrease it, or the A and B button together in order to reset it. So what I want you to do now is go and make that yourself on your own micro bits, give it a go, see if it works. And when you've done that, I want you to try extending your counter so that actually you can increase the score for team A by pressing A, you can increase the score for team B by pressing B. You can decrease for A by holding A and shaking. That'll be interesting. Decrease for B by holding B and shaking. And if you press A and B together, it will give you a display where it will say A and then the number of the score for A and B and the number and the score uh, for B. So you're going to need two variables, one to store score for team A, one for team B, and you're going to need a little bit of different functionality. Uh, but it will make it a lot more useful as a game counter, because at the moment we can only really count the score for one team at a time. So, off you go, good luck, and uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy this next little challenge. Okay, so here's our little micro bit and we've made the extension counter on it. So if I now press the A button, we can give team A a score of 3. And let's give team B a score of 5. And if I want to present those scores on the screen, I press them both together. And let's say I'd made a mistake and I wanted to reduce Team B's score, then I can hold down B and shake. And if I show my score again, holding down A and B, and we do the same for A, so I can hold A and I can shake. And again, I can show the score with A and B. Ooh. If the camera can stay in focus. So there we go, a simple counter that you could use to keep score between two teams in, I don't know, in football or, or rugby or something like that. You could even extend this even further by making it, yeah, it could be something like rugby. You could have a, a button for tries and a button for conversions to automatically do the scores. You could do it for tennis. You could do it for cricket where there's um, you know, less obvious scoring for some of these things. So there's lots of different ways you could adapt this uh, to make it uh, more useful for you uh, and to make a really unique product that other people might really want to use.